And now some high-level American golf croquet from the mountains of North Carolina. Four clubs have gotten together to put on the uh, national championships. Chattooga and Cashiers, Highlands Country Club, and High Hampton have joined with Sapphire Valley that's featured here to put on a fabulous tournament. Lake Toxaway, off to the right, has done this on its own in the past, but the tournament is so big that it needs multiple venues. And these places are all gorgeous. They're mostly attached to golf courses, which makes sense for a croquet facility. And because we're in the mountains, they're carved out of hillsides by and large. So the USCA Golf Croquet Nationals, May of 2022. It's this game you're going to see is on court one at the top there. <coughs> and this is the Sapphire Valley Croquet Club. This tournament is sanctioned by the U.S. Croquet Association, and I'm proud to announce that the USCA is now a sponsor of this channel. If you want to see what they're all about, here's the contact information, and the website is croquetamerica.com. This is block play in championship flight, single game matches. Playing blue and black is Hammond Rowers, who list the Sarasota County Croquet Club and a club here in the mountains of North Carolina in his membership. His handicap is 20, but that's got to be an arbitrary number. He's way better than that. He's taking on, as Eric Sawyer says, the great Jeff Sue at a handicap of minus two. Jeff has won 20 national championships, including the Golf Croquet Championship in 2006. He's a class one referee and instructor in all three disciplines. He's been on multiple McRobertson Shield and Solomon Trophy teams, and he's pretty much the go-to tournament director for national championships these days. Green has a perfect setup, so Jeff has no choice but to take a shot at it. That's got to be demoralizing. Jeff Sue is the tournament director with able assistance from Eileen Sue and from Mike Albert. Mike Albert was also the tournament manager, but I'm told he came down with COVID on day two. I don't know who took his place, and as usual, it takes a big team to manage a tournament like this national championship. They all deserve kudos. You'd think that with Jeff shooting like that, this game would be over in about 20 minutes. Not so. If your backswing is impeded by the terrain, you can move the ball in to clear it of that, but it has to be moved on exactly the same line that you would have taken had you not moved it. Watch 
If Brown weren't there, Jeff might clear green. But it is, so he has no choice but to shoot the hoop, which he might have done anyway. Looks like Hammond may not be all that used to playing second color. And you don't really play a final in the eight, yeah. but, uh, if you play internationally, you'll play second colors at least half the time. And now the algorithm that every beginner has to burn into their brain you have a hoop shot take it if you don't but the ball that plays next does then you have to clear or block it if neither of those is the case figure out how to help your partner there are endless variations and I will never understand why somebody who can hit the shots he did in his first turn can miss one like that it's all in your head it is it doesn't seem like it should be as effective as it is. Yeah, like there's some kind of like, it seems like a hesitation, like as soon as he does a back swing. But it works? Yeah. That's all you need? Three shots in a row. Looks like he was trying to move them both. Brown has a very shallow angle onto the line between white and green. I wonder if a block wouldn't be better here. Classic pattern of setting up with the first ball and clearing with the second one. Again, with multiple variations. Thank you. 
know, fuck that. It's been seven minutes. I've never played here, but the setting is beautiful. They should have scored the suit for it. Where the ball goes out is not a trivial matter sometimes. And finally, the kind of hoop shot you expect from these guys. It took them 15 or 16 minutes to play hoop one. There are a lot of golf croquet games that are over in 15 or 16 minutes. And they must have missed 10 or 11 hoop shots, despite the amazing clearances they were doing. 
The scoreboard will show what happens at each hoop. And they're playing second colors, obviously. It's amazing how there's always a weed whacker, a weed flower, or construction. Along with the spectators, I'm not sure why he's setting up for a jump shot here. You see the see from an angle that he had a jump at? Yeah, I was like, well, I, didn't see. I just I I was thought like, it was just like, straightforward. I was like, why is he jumping this? Classic decision point here for him. Does he clear, block, or set up? If he sets up, expecting green to clear pink, then white might make a mess of that. Blocking is a marginal choice because of the distance and because he's perpendicular to the line he wants the ball to stop on. Clearing pink might have been a better idea. Thank you. 
to each other again. We'll cut out the obligatory pawns for the double banking tango while Jeff lifts and marks all those balls. When they double bank in this tournament, and I think most of the time, they're starting from the same corner, but they have a delay until the first team clears hoop one before they start. Starting from opposite corners at the same time doesn't work very well in golf croquet, even though we do it a lot in American rules. The angle of this cut shot was critical. I didn't want to leave green with a shot at the hoop or an easy block on pink. Doesn't look like it, does it? And now they're pumped up against each other for a third time. I don't think they could have like really timed this any worse with these two games. A third intersection is like I don't know. Yeah. We took a long ass time for Oh, and they ran into our 13. Huh? When they were at three, me and Steven were at 13. They had to wait for us. Dude, that's four in one game. That's rough. They did? Like, yeah. <laughs>
marginal shot. what I mean by it. he's too conservative. We should be going for that. It's really not going to get much better. I think red's a harder shot than yellow was. And Blake's going to rip that from the line. No doubt. I guess it feels less of a pressure shot when I don't have an opponent on the front. You know, so it feels more relaxed taking a shot without being there. I'm going to make it soft anyway, just in case, just to keep it in the dark. There's like a hill by that wicket, though. So. See? Shit. It's a really good plate. Shit, it's a hill. Wow. He didn't shoot that. That's a free shot. No one wants to. No one wants to win this game, huh? I wonder if he's like not tending to jump these when he's jumping them. He could put this through and be legally off sides over by five for two reasons. One, it's the opponent ball, and two, it's the shot that scored the hoop. But he's obviously trying to score the hoop with a jump shot.
White's offsides and apparently doesn't have much of a chance of knocking Green out of there, so he's just putting in a legal position. Pink, of course, is still offside. Him is not doing too bad. A 20 handicap tied with a minus two after four hoops. Great people bring wine.
Blocking the hoop from the non-playing side can be a useful tactic, but probably not in this situation. Being careful to keep white wired from brown. Trying to bump brown out where it can clear white. Brown's not going to be much of an obstacle here, but he doesn't have any other good option for it. So, Jeff runs off three hoops in a row, and things have changed. So this is part of why players raise a hand to signal that they made the hoop, because Hammond didn't see that jump shot go through the hoop, so he was assuming Jeff missed. Not only is Jeff hitting everything, he's <laughs> center balling everything, which is very effective.
Set up first and clear second requires a lot of confidence in White's ability to clear green in this situation.
And now with Brown legally off sides over by hoop nine, Jeff's not about to make eight until Brown comes back. Conceding the hoop and just getting back on sides. Jeff could put white to the right of hoop eight now and then use it to advance pink to nine after pink just makes the hoop. But unless that advanced ball is in hoop shooting position when it stops, that maneuver is more cute than it is useful because all it really does is delay getting all your firepower to the next hoop. This sometimes happens when you advance a ball like Jeff did to make that hoop. He just played a wrong ball. He played the partner ball because pink should have played. Green is supposed to follow white, so Hammond is now playing a wrong ball, his partner ball. And of course, White should follow Brown, so Jeff is playing a wrong ball again in playing pink. And Jeff realizes that they've messed up, and a discussion ensues. It's Hammond's choice. They either play replace and replay, which means pink goes back where Jeff's mallet is. Jeff then gets to play white. There is no penalty. Or if Hammond chooses ball swap, they take pink and white and swap their positions, and then Hammond would then play green, which should have followed the ball that Jeff should have played, which is white. What are they going to do? Ball swap doesn't do Hammond any good, so he elected replace and replay. This whole scenario is to prevent the gifted hoop that comes from wrong ball situations. You can read the rules and figure that all out for yourself. This is a 15 or 16 yarder. I'll bet that's about what Jeff's critical distance is. Good to see you. Okay. 
A hoop nine line shot to win the game. Heads up, it's a hot mic. Jeff Sue over him and Rowery, seven to three. Jeff made it out of blog, but lost to Sharif in the first round of the knockout. Thanks again to our sponsor, the U.S. Croquet Association. Give us a like, subscribe, and be notified for more golf croquet action coming up from the mountains in North Carolina. <laughs>